I have a rather nice physics problem here that another teacher shared with me the other day. I've made my own version out of Lego, of course. I have a block made out of Lego connected with a thread to this other piece of Lego which is going to hang over the edge of the desk. And when I let it go, it moves and then stops. And again, if I bring it back, as soon as I let it go, there's going to be a resultant force. This is then going to accelerate, it's going to move, and at some point before it gets to the edge of the desk, it stops. So my question is, why does it keep stopping? So um, if you want to keep watching for the rest of the video, I've got the full uh, physics explanation. I'm going to do some free body diagrams. We're going to look at the forces and resolving forces. Um, but if you want to maybe have a think about this, uh, can you work out why that block moves and then it stops before it gets to the edge of the desk? Now describing something like this is relatively straightforward, but explaining it is a little bit more tricky, especially when you have to draw on the relevant physics. But what I'm going to be doing is considering the forces acting on the block, and also we need to consider the geometry, especially of that piece of thread down here. So I'm going to do that on the light board that we have over here. I'm just going to represent that block with a dot. So that blue dot is going to be representing the block on the table. Now in terms of forces, because we've got a weight hanging over the edge, that's going to cause a tension in the thread, which is going to cause it initially to accelerate. So if I just put in my tension force, uh, something like that, I'm going to call that T uh, to represent the tension. Other forces, uh, we've got the weight of the block acting down, so that's W, and there's going to be a frictional force in this direction between the block and the table. Now the other force is a normal contact force and that's caused by the table pushing up on the block and the size of that isn't equal to the weight. And the reason for that is that this tension force has a horizontal component and there's also a vertical component of tension. And the vertical component of tension added to the weight is equal to our normal contact force. And I'm going to call that N. So these are just approximate size arrows. Now uh, the other thing we can look at is the angle between the thread and the desk. And that angle between the thread and the desk is this angle in here, theta, which is also equal to this angle here, theta. Now as the block gets closer to the edge, you'll notice that the angle between the thread and the table also increases, and that's going to increase our value of theta. And at the end, again I'm just going to draw my block uh, as this blue dot over here, at the end the weight stays the same, so the tension stays the same. So we're going to have the same size tension force, but now it's going to be acting at a much steeper angle. So if I just put it in something like that, I've kind of exaggerated the angles a little bit. Now again, if we think about the horizontal component of that and the vertical component of that uh, tension force, we now have something which is, again, subtly different to what we had at the beginning. Uh, the other forces we have include the weight, uh, and that's going to stay the same. But the size of the frictional force between the block and the table has increased. Okay, I'm going to call that F. And the reason for that, even though it's the same surface, is because we have a much larger um, downwards force acting on the block. And that's going to be equal to the size of the vertical component of tension plus the weight. Um, and I'm going to do a much bigger arrow here to be my normal contact force. Now initially up here, we had a resultant force. Because what we can say is that T cos theta is greater than the size of the frictional force, and that's why the block starts moving when you let it go. But at the end, we've got something which has stopped moving, and the reason for that now, if this angle here is theta, is that T cos theta is now equal to that frictional force, and therefore, uh, at this particular time, it's not moving. So what we find are two things happen at the same time. Uh, first of all, as theta gets bigger, uh, we can say that as theta gets bigger, cos theta gets smaller. And so as the block gets closer to the edge of the table, the horizontal component of force decreases. And I suppose at the same time, um, because this frictional force is going to be related to T sine theta, um, as the angle gets larger, we're going to have an increased size of frictional force between the block and the table. Um, so yeah, basically that is how we can explain why this block initially starts to accelerate and then it's going to come to rest and stop before it gets to the edge of the table. We can do it by uh, just simplifying the whole system 
to uh, maybe just considering the forces acting on the block. We can draw a free body diagram, we can look at the forces, and then with a bit of analysis and including bits of trigonometry, uh, don't forget of course if we look at a cos theta graph, so y equals cos theta, looks a bit like this, as theta gets bigger, um, cos theta gets smaller. And that's because as it gets close to the edge, the component of force in the horizontal direction gets smaller and the vertical component of tension gets a lot larger. So, Lego, simple physics and a full explanation.